Hello and welcome to Preetress of Crows podcast. Today's podcast is going to be the story of Eros and Psyche. Instead of starting at the beginning, I did want to start with my personal favorite story of Greek mythology. The story begins with Psyche, the most beautiful woman of her kingdom. It is never specified what kingdom she is from or what her mom and dad's name was, but she did have two other sisters that were not as beautiful but still beautiful, which is, and sorry if I mispronounce this, Agloria and Sitepi. They were both, they were all from Greece. Due to Psyche being the most beautiful, Aphrodite saw many of her followers leave to worship Psyche. This made Aphrodite grow jealous and call for Eros. Make Psyche fall in love with the most hideous beast. Aphrodite snapped at Eros. Eros, confused on why such a mortal deserved this curse, waited for nightfall to sneak into Psyche's chambers. As Eros caught sight, sight of Psyche's looks, he found the beauty that was Psyche. He then understood why his mother was so jealous of such a mortal. Just as he was admiring her looks, Psyche turned in her sleep. Eros found that very unexpected and ended up stabbing himself with the arrow of love, causing the god to fall deeply in love with Psyche. Time passed, months passed, whatever you want to think of it as. Psyche was unable to find a suitor even though many thought she was beautiful whereas her sisters were already married. Eros watched out of sight, keeping away any man that wished to court Psyche. Psyche's father did grow worried about this and went to the Oracle of Delphi to know Psyche's future. Apollo, who is the one to tell the oracle what to say, had a deep hatred for Eros, so one for the prophet talked about Eros, it wasn't the kindest. She will marry to she will marry a monster. She has upset the gods greatly, bringing a curse to herself and soon your kingdom. Place Psyche on the cliff and do not turn back, else this curse will reach. The next morning, Psyche's father did as the oracle told him. Psyche fought with her father long and hard, confused in why the switch was so great, even though she warned them multiple times that this would bring hatred from the gods. Once at the cliff, the west wind, Sepphoris, carried Psyche into the clouds. Once the clouds had cleared, Psyche found a beautiful kingdom of golden riches. She was placed on the ground as a voice started speaking to her. They were invisible, invisible servants wishing to help her as she stays. They served her by bathing her, entertaining her, feeding her lavish foods, and even showing her her closet and showing around the castle. All, like, the normal things, I guess. Once night fell, she was led to her chambers where she would meet her husband. She was unable to see um, her husband, but he was gentle unlike any monster. He slept beside her every night, leaving before Apollo's sun had rose. 
Psyche spent her days with the invisible servants, her husband unable to be found until Nyx covered the sky, making it so she could not see him. She questioned him once, Husband, am I able to look at you? Her husband held on to her. I want us to be seen as equals. She never once did question him again. He treated her greatly and gave her riches and silks, everything that would be valued in the eyes of the Greeks back then. Though she did grow to miss her family dearly, which her husband noticed. He arranged for her to see her family one one day. Zephyrus took Psyche back to the cliff where she would go back to her old kingdom. Her family was very happy to see her alive as they thought she just died, but her sisters found jealousy planted within their hearts as Psyche was very much covered in the riches of her kingdom, her new kingdom, with like golden necklaces, a silk dress. The stories of Psyche's husband and lavish castle did not really help her jealous sisters, so they started to snap and say that it was untrue that she was lying. Psyche had Zephyrus bring her sisters and her back to the castle to prove that she was truly living in wealth. Her sisters grew jealous again, coming up with a scheme to plant false thoughts into Psyche's mind to ruin their marriage. They said things such as, you have never seen your husband. You do realize that the oracle did say that there were, he's still a monster. You never saw him. Like, a lot of things to make her doubt. The sisters put a plan in Psyche's mind to end her marriage. Afterwards, the West Wind did take the sisters away. That night, Psyche put the plan in action. With one hand on a dagger and the other with an oil lamp, she walked to her sleeping husband. When she came close to him, Psyche found a beautiful man, a god. In her time of admiring her husband, some oil spilled on the lamp and burnt arrows. Quickly, the god rose to find his wife above him. He was outraged that she would break a promise and break their trust. Without a thought, arrows flew out. Psyche grabbed onto him just before he did, but as her feet left the window, she ended up falling. The west wind gave her back to her old kingdom with her family. Her sisters tried, but try as they might, they tried to get the west wind to bring them to the kingdom. It failed, and the sisters fell from the cliff. This is where the story can go many different directions, depending on what one you read. So, it's either she has wor- she will worship Demeter until her, her last breath, working but never being able to take arrows from her mind. Another variation has it so she's Psyche is wandering around the world in search of her love, Eros, but never finds him and ends up dying in the woods. In this variation, also has different variations where either she becomes just a spirit warning of distrust or she becomes an owl and asking like, who's there make sure, like, questioning people with distrust. And the final way is that she does worship Demeter still, but Demeter finds it in her heart, sorry for Psyche, and tells her to go to Aphrodite and beg for forgiveness. This is where we'll kind of pick up from this story because it is a little longer than the other variations. After the West Wind brings her back, Psyche starts to worship Demeter. Demeter pities the girls 
sadness and tells her to beg for forgiveness at Aphrodite's temple. Aphrodite is not quick to accept the apology, forcing Psyche to go do trials. The first was to separate milt, grain, and seeds from a mountain as grand as Olympus. Eros had ants help her with her task. The second task was to steal golden wool from a deadly wool well, from deadly rams, but sometimes it's just one deadly ram. Eros whispered to Psyche how to do it, which was in the form of as the ram was led into thorns, its wool got caught in the thorns so she could easily get the wool. No one knew that Eros was helping Psyche at all, though. Not even Psyche herself. She just thought it was strange whispers. The third task was to fetch water from the river sacks. Stakes. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Um, which Zeus's eagle ended up helping her by getting a pot and just dipping it in there. The last task was deadly as well. Aphrodite did not realize that she would even be able to complete these tasks. It was very questionable, like she should have not succeeded and should not have been still alive. So her final one seems to be a little more easy, but it could also cause great death. Aphrodite had Psyche go to Persephone in the underworld and ask for beauty. Aphrodite handed Psyche a box, told her not to open it whenever she gets it. Arrow, Psyche didn't know how to get to the underworld other than to die, but Arrow stopped her and told her how to go to the underworld and escape from Cerberus. Though Psyche wished for beauty, she did tr- she did try to ignore the box. So she went asked Queen Persephone um, if she could have the beauty in the box for Aphrodite. So Persephone greatly agreed and gave it to her. The box was much heavier. Now she was almost out of the underworld had passed Cerberus long before by giving him honey and bread and Psyche ended up seeing herself in a reflection of water and found that she had looked very tired and knew that the box was very heavy and very filled with beauty so she thought what's a little bit of beauty like out of the box whenever she opened the box and it went to her, and the beauty went into her. She ended up perishing. Eros felt a sense that something happened to his love and rushed to her, only to find her dead. Um, Theotos, I could be pronouncing that wrong, he was already over top of her and ready to collect her soul and bring it permanently to the underworld. Eros gently kissed her, brought the, which brought her back to life and brought the beauty out of her and back into the box. Um, afterwards, Psyche went and gave the beauty to Aphrodite, while Eros went to Olympus to ask Zeus a question. This question led to Psyche being fed foods that would gain immortality. She became a goddess in Olympus, and Eros and Psyche had a daughter named Hebion. Hebion became the goddess of pleasure. Thank you so much for listening. If you wish to hear more of the romance versions of the romantic um, versions of mythology. Uh, Those are some of my favorite, personally. Um, 
Thank you for listening. Bye. Hello. This is the after editing. I didn't realize how soft-spoken I was, so I do apologize for that. Um, also, if you want to see any of the, my social media, I do post a lot of um, tarot readings on my Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube here. Um, so if you want to go follow my YouTube, Instagram, whatever, that will be in the description below, as well as my website if you do want a personal reading. And this podcast is also on Spotify if you much rather listen on Spotify. Um, that will also be in the description below. Thank you for listening once again. Sorry for the soft-spokenness.